Cruising to me is one of the most underappreciated movies of all time. When I first started thinking of doing this video, I was going to say underrated, but it is not by any means a huge accomplishment for cinema or anything like that. It isn't on par with the director William Friedkin's most well-known film The Exorcist, but really what is? And it isn't as well-known as the lead actor Al Pacino's biggest movie, The Godfather, but then again, what is? But for some reason, any time the film is mentioned to somebody who has seen it, you usually get an interesting reaction. Cruising is a film that had sparked a wide range of reactions and opinions since its release in 1980. While some critics and audiences appreciate it for its unique and bold approach to storytelling, others have criticized it for its controversial themes and its depiction of the gay community. It's interesting to note that over the years, opinions about cruising have become even more diverse, and the film has found a growing appreciation. While the film faced significant controversy upon its initial release, as I mentioned earlier, it has garnered a cult following and has been reassessed in subsequent years. To me, the worst thing a film could do is be boring. So whether or not people love it or hate it, they are at least intrigued. But the reason I wanted to explore this movie is more so not because I thought it was entertaining, but because I became aware of its roots in reality, a chilling connection to an actual serial killer. Cruising is a 1980 crime thriller film directed by William Friedkin. Cruising explores the world of the leather subculture in New York City and the investigation of a series of murders within that community. The leather subculture was a cultural and social phenomenon that emerged primarily within the gay community in the mid 20th century. It revolves around a shared interest in particular types of clothing, styles, and activities. The term leather is derived from the clothing often associated with this subculture, such as leather jackets and pants. But the leather culture is also perceived to be closely related to BDSM practices an acronym representing bondage, discipline, sadism, and masochism. BDSM practices often involve the exploration of power dynamics and role-playing scenarios. Participants may take on dominant or submissive roles and have a sexual interaction or relationship based on those dynamics. Though so clearly this is the start of the controversy of the film. The title of the film has a double meaning. For one, it could be seen as cops cruising to catch a criminal, and another meaning is within this culture, men call it cruising when they are looking for sex. Al Pacino's character, Steve Burns, is a young cop who is chosen to go undercover to investigate a series of murders within this underground community because he looks a lot like the victims. Burns, thinking this high-profile case will fast-track him to a promotion, agrees and begins his undercover operation by immersing himself in the gay leather scene. He starts befriending members of the community, trying to gain their trust while searching for clues that might lead to the murderer. Steve finds out the little details of the culture, and in turn, the audience starts learning this as well. Like in one scene, it explains that different handkerchiefs that men walk around with mean different sex acts they are into. One example is a yellow handkerchief in your left pant pocket means you like to be pissed on. So yeah, you can start to see why this movie is a little bit polarizing. But as Steve delves deeper into the subculture, he faces psychological challenges and struggles with his own identity. The lines between his real self and his undercover persona become increasingly blurred. Burns mistakenly compels the police to interrogate a waiter, who he originally suspects to be the killer, who is then intimidated and beaten to coerce a confession before the police discover the waiter's fingerprints do not match the killer's. Steve is disturbed by the brutality and tells his captain he didn't agree to this assignment just so people could be beaten up for being gay. And as Steve encounters various suspects and potential leads during his investigation, bodies keep showing up and Steve's relationships within the subculture become increasingly ambiguous. Steve's work takes a toll on his relationship with his girlfriend due to his inability to tell her the details of his current assignment and what is basically his new life in the clubs and hanging out with Ted, his new neighbor, who himself is having relationship problems with his jealous boyfriend. It is to be thought of by the audience that Steve is now questioning his own identity and sexuality. At one point, Nancy even claims that Steve is no longer attracted to her. Later on in the film, Burns investigates students at Columbia University who studied with one of the previous victims, a college professor. Burns thinks that he has found the serial killer, Stuart Richards, a music graduate student that he has seen at the clubs before. Steve follows Richards one day and breaks into his apartment when he is out. Inside, he finds a box of letters Richards has written to his father, but never mailed. In the letters, Richard describes his dark thoughts and the struggle with his own sexuality. Steve returns to his apartment building and knocks on his new friend Ted's door, who he has started getting closer to. Ted's lover, Gregory, answers, and assuming Ted and Steve are having an affair, Gregory threatens him with a knife after they have a physical altercation. Steve later waits outside Richards' apartment until Richards emerges and heads to the park. They meet at a bench and Steve invites Richards back to his apartment 
but Richard suggests they go to the nearby tunnel instead. Steve agrees and inside the tunnel takes his pants off, ordering Richard to do the same. Steve watches as Richard flips a knife from his boot, and wielding his own knife, Steve stabs Richard in the gut and places him under arrest. At the hospital, Steve's boss tells Richard that the police matched his fingerprint to a quarter used at a peep show at the time of one of the killings, and promises to reduce his sentence if he confesses to all of the murders. After the case has been solved, the film jumps forward and we see police inside Ted's apartment, where Ted's body has been found stabbed to death. In the final scene, Steve's girlfriend finds him at her apartment, and he tells her he is moving back with her. While she waits for him to shave off his beard that he grew during his undercover work, she finds a leather jacket, police hat, and a pair of sunglasses left behind by Steve and tries them on. Unbeknownst to her, it's the same outfit Richards wore when he committed the murders. And that's how the film ends. Cruising concludes with an ambiguous ending. Did Steve kill Ted because he was jealous? Why does Steve have the killer's outfit? The climax of Cruising is deliberately ambiguous and has been a subject of interpretation and discussion among viewers. Al Pacino has even said that when filming the ending, he didn't know how to play it because he didn't know if the character was the killer or not. Critics and some members of the gay community accused the film of sensationalizing and stigmatizing the gay leather scene. Friedkin filmed on location in actual leather clubs, and during the filming, protesters from the local community would try and ruin shots by screaming over the actors. But besides the initial protests, the film is also controversial because it's based in reality. Between 1975 and 1977, authorities discovered numerous garbage bags in the Hudson River, each containing human remains that were identified as belonging to six individuals. Upon looking at the apparel found with the body parts, investigators concluded that all the clothes that have been purchased from leather stores in Greenwich Village on the west side of Lower Manhattan. This area, renowned for its gay bars and related establishments, serves as a popular meeting point for the homosexual community, and because of this, they assumed all the victims were probably gay. While the investigation was ongoing for the murders, a resident of Greenwich Village named Paul Bateson was arrested in September 1977 for the murder of film reporter Addison Verrill. At Bateson's trial, prosecutors brought before the court a witness named Richard Ryan, who claimed that Bateson had told him shortly before the murder that he had also killed three other men. Each of them had been stabbed to death at their apartments in Lower Manhattan in early 1973, after having visited gay bars. Furthermore, Ryan asserted that Bateson confessed to the murder and dismemberment of six gay men, whose remains he disposed of in the Hudson River. However, no charges related to these murders were filed against Bateson due to insufficient evidence. He was solely convicted of Verrill's murder, leading to a sentence of 20 years to life. Throughout the rest of his imprisonment, Bateson consistently disavowed any involvement in the quote-unquote bag murders. One of the creepier portions of the story is that Bateson was acquainted with the director of Cruising, William Friedkin, after Bateson had a small role in Friedkin's 1973 film, The Exorcist. During Bateson's 1979 trial, Director William Friedkin frequently visited him in the county jail, asking Bateson about his story. Friedkin later claimed that while interviewing Bateson, he got him to partially admit responsibility in the murders, particularly about one gay man whose body he had dismembered, the remains stuffed in a garbage bag, and then thrown into the East River. Apart from the comments attributed to Bateson during the Friedkin interview, and the assertions by police and prosecutors claiming his admission to the serial murders while in jail, no concrete evidence exists to definitively link Bates into the bag murders. Despite being the most consistently proposed suspect, the absence of additional evidence casts a lingering shadow of uncertainty over his involvement in these heinous crimes. Friedkin decided to loosely adapt Gerald Walker's 1970 novel, Cruising, a novel about a serial killer targeting gay men, and also took inspiration from the bag murders to serve as plot elements for his film. Friedkin even spoke with a man who survived an attempted murder by the alleged serial killer at the time, and he mentioned that he sounds little sing-song rhyme, who's here, I'm here, you're here. He made note of it and included it in the ending of the film, where Burns finally confronts the killer. Cruising is a fascinating time capsule of a film. It shows an underground culture that most people would never be able to witness or maybe even hear of. But more than that, it is interesting because of the connections with the real world and shows again that the eerie reality proves scarier than any fiction.